one of the things that I hear from priests is the scourge that um, the internet has introduced into the spiritual lives of many. And we think first of all of internet pornography and the associated sins that flow from that and how that damages the purity and it damages the fidelity of men and married couples, but even of women, right? Uh, that, 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 that can be drawing them in and lead them to spiritual bondage. But then there's also the depression, anxiety, loneliness that comes from uh, the use and overuse of smartphones to be taking in information that disturbs their peace and and makes them feel less than the, the dignity that is theirs as children of God because uh, they don't get enough likes. They don't get enough uh, uh, positive feedback and affirmation from their posts. But Things, things of that sort. When you think about the reality of virtue and vice and becoming saints in our time, um, where do you see the, 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 the front, the battle fronts that we're facing regarding vices that are coming against us? And how do you see the internet um, as part of that battle front that lots of folks are facing? Well, I think the internet is a beautiful, beautiful invention. And we're Catholic. Remember, we're not Amish, and that's nothing against our Amish brothers and sisters. We have some wonderful Amish families that live right near us here at Fathers of Mercy in Auburn, Kentucky, but they'll tell you they're anti-technology. Mm -hmm. They don't want anything to do with that. Well, that's not us. That, we're Catholic. We see the internet as a beautiful, beautiful invention, but like anything else, it needs to be tempered. This is where the discipline of the spiritual life that feeds over into the discipline of one's temporal life or secular life comes into play. And this is why something like a retreat is so good for people. Monthly confession, weekly Eucharist, um, praying with your spouse, uh, praying with your confers if you're in religious life, praying with your sisters if you're in the convent. Um, if you're single, holy friendships. Uh, what's the old saying? Garbage in, garbage out. Virtue in, virtue out, right? But I'm not going to bash the internet. I'm not going to bash the goodness of wine. Even St. Paul says, take a little wine for your stomach, right? Mm -hmm. I'm Portuguese. The Portuguese love wine. <laughs> wine can become an evil in a person's life if it's not kept in check. So for example, uh, as Catholics, we see no problem with the internet. But if it's leading you into the scourge of internet pornography, whether single or married or consecrated religious, then no, as Catholics, we don't love the internet. As Catholics, we love wine. It's in scripture, for crying out loud. Our Lord used it at the Last Supper, okay? and consecrated it into his precious blood, okay? Uh, through the miracle of transubstantiation. We don't have a problem with wine, but if, if your love of wine becomes eight glasses a night, because that's the only way you can deal with what is an already crumbling marriage, then uh-uh, sorry. As Catholics, we don't love wine. Mm -hmm. uh, as Catholics, uh, we love science and technology. But if your love for science and technology leads to creating human persons in glass petri dishes in science labs subject to the labs themselves and those running the laboratories then uh, -uh. as catholics we don't love science and technology we love fashion i mean look look at this right <laughs> we we love fashion but if your love for fashion uh, is having your 15 year old daughter look 25 then no sorry as catholics we don't love fashion but as catholics we love fashion okay as Catholics, we love faith, but if your faith becomes extremely rigid or too or too lax, then we know we have to work on our faith to make it balance. 